Hey guys, welcome back to Mustang Rehab. Uh, we appreciate you tuning back in. But before we move on, uh, y'all do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it's free to you and it helps our channel grow. So uh, anyways, just want to mention that real quick. And uh, we're about to get started on this, uh, our Ford 9 inch rear end and the Dana 30 for the Bronco. And we're gonna tear it down and see what we have so we can kind of judge what we need to order for parts for our upcoming reassembly videos. So uh, y'all stay tuned, here we go. Alright guys, what we have here is a Ford 9 inch rear end out of the Bronco. It's uh, 411 gears with limited slip. I believe it's original. It's still got the tag on it. Uh, but looking at its shape and everything, it, uh, I would, I'm just guessing it is. But uh, what I'd like to do is open it up, remove the center section, and let's check the gears out because they have quite a bit of uh, backlash, I think from wear over the years. I can show you that real quick. That right there is the free play in the rear end. So that that to me just shows that the rear end's got some wear in it. But it is limited slip. You can tell when I turn the pinion, both of them are turning the same direction. And again, the bend plate said it was, but uh, we'll verify that here in a minute when we pop it out. So first thing we're gonna do is drain the oil get you some gloves. This stuff stinks. It'll stay with you all night and your wife will make you sleep on the couch. Or outside. <laughs> or outside. <laughs> this stuff really does stink. So. Not all nine inch housings have a drain plug. Well, I guess they might be in the bottom, but luckily these are right here. I say not too lucky because it's not gonna drain the deep section. But, we can get a lot of it out. See how big a mess we make. I don't know if y'all can see all that on the floor. When we disassembled the chassis the other night, I just, I left it like you guys saw it. I walked back in and the front differential had just about drained all of its grease out. So I had quite a mess here in the shop when I walked in a little while ago. But that was my fault. I was tired, hot. And, uh, well, you were doing it after working all day and yeah. coming home trying to do this at night. Big job, work 10 hours a day at a real job and come out here and play at night. So. All right, that's not all of it. I, I, we're gonna have a lot trapped right in here, but we get the bulk out of it. So when we pop our axles out, we shouldn't have it just run all over the floor. Let's see how much trouble we get these old rusty brake drums off, because I'll go ahead and tell you, they can be a booger. All right, we're gonna, like I said, a lot of times you can just take a hammer and sort of tap them off. If they've been on there a real long time, it takes a lot more work than that. All right, they were being a little bit of a booger, and I should have did this to start with, is just go ahead and get you, a, uh, if you have a brake tool, uh, go in there and just reach in and back your drums off and so that's what I'm gonna do real quick loosen the shoes up so basically it releases from the from the drum and it'll come off a little easier but uh, once again one of my granddad's tools this is uh, like I said uh, drum brakes are great everybody wants to go to disc all the time but I'm telling you I had a drag car at one time uh, Nova and it had drum brakes front and rear really fast car and my granddad set the brakes on brakes up on it for me I hit the pedal at the other end of the track and that car would stop and it didn't pull so uh, it's all about knowing what you're doing and he had skills you reach in there's a little hole in the back of your brake drum and then there's a, a tumbler on the inside so you just sit there and move the thing out so we can see the tumbler I don't know if they can see it in there so just a little star kind of Okay, so I showed you guys how to loosen the shoes up. 
So now, it, you can see, it's, I'm not sitting there having a hammer on it. That's really amazing how good these, you know, there's a lot of rust in there, but how good they look for as old as they are and how long this thing sat. So what I'm gonna do real quick is get a can so I can keep all my brake parts together. All right, so first thing, go ahead and remove your springs on your shoes. Oh, thanks mom. Then uh, you got a this little spring compressor tool. Can't see your arms at all. Sorry. Spring compressor tool. You don't have to have this. It just makes your life easier. Especially when you put them back in so you can see what you're doing. The bottom, you just sort of hold the post behind. Come on. I won't spend too much time explaining all this on brakes because I'm sure most of y'all have done them. But, yeah. Get all this stuff out. Let's break off. Make sure you get all your little pieces and you disassemble it. I'll have to get this off too before I get rid of them. I had to get a, I'll get a screwdriver here in a second and pop that, this little retainer clip. I'll, you just remove that, remove the pin, just keep that with your stuff because this will go on your next set of pads. Or shoes, I'm sorry. We're going to take the dust shield off the rear end. To take the dust shield off, you'll just rotate the hole in the axle to line up with the, the bolt. There's four bolts. Remove it, then you just keep indexing it until you get to all four bolts. So let's get those pulled out real quick. Oh, and the reason I'm doing this, guys, if, you ever, if you've never done this before, I'm sorry, I, I, I kind of jump around. I don't mean to... If you've never uh, disassembled a Ford 9 inch, you have to have the axles out first before you can remove the center section. So, uh, axles out, center section out, and then we can sort of look at the gears and see what we got. Uh, what we're doing tonight is great vindication for having a whole lot of tools because Joni's getting to see why I have so many. <laughs> um, you're going to need a slide hammer. Uh, if you don't have one, you could probably just keep bumping around your axle to get it out, get your bearing pulled out of your housing. But a slide hammer makes it much easier. You'll uh, basically bolt this piece to the axle, use your lug nuts to hold it on. All right, then your slide hammer portion just threads into this piece. Just get it in there pretty good. And then you just hold it like that. That's our... So I can feel some play in this bearing. Got some up and down play there. So we definitely need a set of axle bearings. So that's why we're doing this. It's got a little axle seal in here. You don't have to show it, but you'll need to replace that too when it comes time. You know, you get a lot of sealing through the through your bearing. This is just like this like a double seal anyways. Uh, let's see, I still have my brake line hooked up. Once again, guys, my brake lines are shot, so I'm just cutting them. You got, if you have good brake lines, of course you want to remove them and then just
this uh, emergency brake cable. Okay guys, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm not going to bore you with uh, doing two. We'll get that done, we'll flip it over, and we'll get the carrier removed. You still have one of the, the, some things on the back side of it, or on the top side. Wow! It needs rebuilt. <laughs> Go check this out. That's why we're doing this. Okay guys, we're on the front end on the Dana 30. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing real quick with the brakes. Sort of how I um, kind of demonstrated with the other side on the rear. It's basically the same thing. If it's drum, you just loosen them up, get the brakes pulled off, and uh, we'll start disassembling it from there. So we'll, excuse me, we'll stop if we come to something that's a little bit different than the rear end, okay? First off, guys, I want y'all to know my wife is starting to... I started tearing this apart and she's over there taking apart the brake lines for me because she watched me do it over here. The girl's learning. She's, she's a smart motorhead, but, you know, she's thinking ahead and she's working ahead of me, so. Just trying to speed up the process. <laughs> I'm ready to go inside. So, she's helping. All right, well, I got the brakes pulled off, as you can see, and this thing was really nasty inside, so it had a leak either in the wheel cylinder or the grease from the hub had slung up here in the brakes, so it definitely had a, an issue, too. But uh, I ordered a front disc brake conversion kit. So all this will be replaced. It's got new locking hubs that's coming with it and everything. So uh, we'll save these parts in case we were to need it in the future. But uh, anyways, we will show you guys how to get all this disassembled. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. You get your um, get your hub off, and you got this little snap ring right here. I've already got it sort of picked up, so I wouldn't take up too much time. You just sort of reach in there. You'll find the end of it, and just pop it out of the groove. There's your snap ring. I'm gonna start getting this stuff pulled out. Collar. Right, there's the other ring. Let me go get my ring. I'm sorry. Let me just work your snap ring off. Right, let me uh, get this worked out. I don't see anything ground up in it. And you get your spring in here. And then now we have our our nuts that hold the hub on right in there. Alright guys, I don't have the uh, the socket basically it's sort of like a spanner wrench, but it's on a socket. I don't know what happened to mine, so I'm gonna pick a one up at the parts house tomorrow. So I'll do that. Let's go. We're just going to go ahead and pull the inspection cover off the differential and just take a look at the gears. So we'll finish this video up maybe tomorrow afternoon. So it's going to be daylight again and uh, movie magic <laughs> back here. So, uh, so we'll stop here for now. Uh, except let's look at the gears and then we'll pick back up. It's nice. This thing's got all the original tags on it. So that's pretty cool. That's 
nasty. Yeah, it's dirty, but let's see. The gears look actually look good. We'll get that really cleaned up. Maybe uh, see how see what the barren shape is like. Uh, be careful. Sometimes that's, oh, that right there, that well, that's well, that's dirt. Looks like yeah, it's just a lot of just filth from over the years. Sometimes when these when the gears are wore bad, these are, this will be razor sharp right there. But I can I smell it. Uh, it smells like your dad's tractor, don't it? No, I just smell that smell you were talking about. I smell yeah. it on the other one. That smell will get on your hands, and you can't wash it off. All right, so uh, this is why we do this. We'll go to the front and rear end, put uh, U-joints, all that kind of stuff, get it built like it's supposed to be. Be back tomorrow, pull the, the front hubs out, and we'll finish this video up. Good morning, guys. Uh, back out here, this is a day and a half later. This is the Friday before July 4th weekend. Anyways, just let you guys sort of know where I'm at, what day, it's, what day we're on here. Uh, I went and picked up a new socket so I could get my lock nut and the retainer and then the other nut behind it that holds the hub on. So we're back out here. We're going to finish the teardown today and then I want to check the backlash in my gear set on the front end and the rear end just to kind of give you guys an overview of the condition they're in. I really feel like the back gear is going to have a lot. You know, I showed you guys that a few minutes ago. Anyways, uh, let's get back to tearing this thing down and, and get this part over with. Get tool in there. There we go. Yeah, these things usually aren't real tight. I believe you set your, uh, your, your lock nut here between like 60 and 80 foot pounds. That one didn't seem to be even that. Honestly. Right, here's a that little lock ring I was talking about right here. This is what keeps your inside nut from turning. So I'm gonna get my hook, my hook tool. Alright, just a little tool where I can reach in here and Hopefully get a hold of that a little better. All right. That's that. And you can see it has this that little detent that goes down on the shaft and locks this in place. And this other nut's got little studs sticking up which lock this in place. Your other nut runs on top of it and locks the two which ties all your hub together. But we'll go through that when we do a reassembly. Just kind of showing you the parts as they come out. Oh yeah, that, that didn't hardly, I didn't have any preload on it at all. But about what you would expect with several years of wear. these bolts and get our, our uh, dust shield off. Well, if you guys are wondering where Joni is at this moment, <laughs> she's still in the bed. Actually, all the girls are. Again, this is the time of the morning I like to come out here. Alright, so now we want to get the our stub shaft off here again I'm just have this flat chisel to kind of knock it all right all right we do that okay. This off. But you see, there's more 
bearings, seals. This is all this stuff should come with the brake kit, I believe. So we'll see next week when it shows up. And this is a awesome time to replace your universal joints. We're gonna do that and ooh, quite a bit of wear right there. It's on that seal face right there. Anyways, oh, it's kind of, I don't know if y'all can see it. We'll have to look into that. Uh, I'd hate to build this thing and this thing starts slinging grease out of it. This is your seal from the, basically the, the stationary side of the differential. When it comes through your axle tube and then it gets to the knuckle, that seal there, but you can tell it's really worn to that, that axle there. Oh well, we'll check that. Again, that's why we're doing all this. All right guys, so I'm kind of feeling my knuckle here. I don't know if I'm gonna cause myself the, the issue of, of tearing that down right now because it feels really good. If the other side feels as good as this one, I don't believe I'm gonna tear it down. As y'all know, I've got enough going on. I don't wanna cause myself work just for the sake of doing it. It uh, feels good, it's not sloppy, I don't feel any play at all. Uh, I'll inspect it a little bit more, get it really good and cleaned up, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the face of the gear set real quick so we can check the backlash and uh, we'll check the back and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay guys, I've got my stare at uh, dial indicator set up here on my set of gears. Again, this isn't ideal because there's a lot of grease and oil and some stuff still in the rear end, but uh, usually you really wanna have them good and cleaned up. But this is just for, just to see what kind of shape they're in. So I'm gonna try not to talk right over the top of the camera here. I've got, I had to set it up. Let's see. It looks like we have about uh, 11 thousandths, 10 to 11 thousandths. It didn't have to be on zero. We just have to know where we start, right? Anyways, it's, it's 10 to 11 thousandths, which is actually really good. Um, usually try to set set a street set of gears up for right around 12. I'm gonna reuse these gears. They still have the original Dana stamping on them. Here, let me show you. 12-1-65 Dana. Even though it's got a lot of sludge in there, the gears look really good. I can't feel any ridge on it. They're not sharp. And as you see, the backlash feels pretty good. I'm sure it's gonna it'll probably widen up a little bit once all that the grease and oil is cleaned off of them. They don't feel anything like the rear end. <laughs> so we're gonna go see what those are real quick. All right, here's backlash for the, the rear gear set. That's more than I would want to see. It feels like much more than that. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you watching. Uh, we got the front and rear end tore down. We got the uh, brakes pulled off. We know what we need to buy now. We need to buy gaskets, bearings, seals, um, the uh, universal joints. We got the brake kit coming. I need to get full brakes for the rear. So um, lots of stuff to do, but then we need to sandblast it uh, after we get it cleaned up real good. We'll take it out, sandblast it with the frame, hopefully within the next two weeks. So there's a lot going on, lots of little pieces behind the scenes. And I'm trying not to miss anything, let you guys sort of see the whole build. That's the idea of these videos. So uh, some of it may be informative, some of it may be snooze fest. <laughs> but, but just bear with us. Because uh, we're kind of thinking about the Super Celebration in Tennessee. It's the uh, 7th through the 10th and... October. Anyways, uh, sounds like a lot of fun. A friend of mine has been several years. We'd like to try it out and uh, see what it's like. So, you guys going? Anybody going? Comment. Uh, let me know uh, what you think. Should we go or not? Anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching again and uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. All right. Well, y'all have a great fourth. Take care.